Tokyo against the Karen Fidenzo, so I think it would be um, an interesting game. I think Vienna will be stronger, but let, let's see how the Italians. Right, so Vienna was at the ball first. Then you should also think. We're fighting for the ball in the midfield. And scrum at the surface, passing, trying to pass for a player now who passed the ball. Who with the teammates, one player of each team under the ball, waiting for it to fall. Okay, and, and now he has the ball. Firenze is. Oh, she's playing with Piranha. Swing suit, trying to get in there. So here we uh, good for checking by the Vienna women. Um, not letting the ball get close to the basket. Yes, and that was a call from the referee at uh, grabbing, holding with the ball. I think that was Jackie Hayes. Um, so free throw against Vienna. So here we have four checker blocking the Florencia attack. A few years away from the basket. The Vienna defense is very solid, like they're also yes. moving have quite a solid defense. And now I think it's Nisi Schwarz swimming away with the player and the ball. Ball is on the surface. Uh, Firenze had it. We're in the corner of the Vienna basket, actually, so yes, you could say that Firenze is slightly dominating now, but they're not really getting. But they're, they're not putting the Vienna really well in danger. Yes, they're, they're not putting Vienna in danger. They couldn't get past the defense. And here we have this is the counter attack from Vienna. And again, stopped in the midfield. That was very interesting actually that they stopped in the midfield and they cannot really pass the Pirenza wall. Pirenza is really where you see the players uh, at the, at the goal, really defensive. Thinking right now, a good, good call, um, good call there. Uh, but there was missing the guard. And but Firenze managed to get in possession of the ball, but she's alone now, the player. Um, scrum at the surface. There comes another player in. I think there were some changes outside. Um, trying to get in there. But Vienna is back in position possession of the bar ball. Um, the ball fell. This is Teresa Viha now going towards the basket. I think I will have two Vienna players well well positioned under basket. Pushed away by the Italians. But I, I'm surprised. I'm possibly surprised actually by Firenze now where I would have expected Vienna to have scored already by now. So this is very good for Firenze. So they're tackling a lot. And uh, nice. nice. The pass behind that with the goal. There was close. Good. Hold of the ball. And we're back at the surface. Trying to get in possession of the ball. Oh, I see. Actually, for the Firenze team, we had a uh, woman right here. We had Anita, Irene, Virginia. There's five five players actually were playing at uh, the World Championships in. The six of them were playing at the World Championships in Graz, and the Vienna players as well. I think was seven of them. Plus, actually, Jackie Hayes was playing for um, the US, and Stefan mm -hmm. was playing for Germany. So they're getting in there, quite pressure at the Firenze basket, but they're defending really good, trying to do a good job. Um, go 
going after the ball before going up to breathe and then coming down really fast. Here the guard, you can see she's substituting in seconds. So we're back. Um, I mean, the defense. Sometimes I'm mixing Spanish and uh, trying to use it in English. It's a bit tiring to be commenting all, all the time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so we have no defense here. A goalie lifted. That could be a There's chance, but very strong by Nasca. They will have started. I'll show you now lying on the basket, belly down, and that, that was a goal by Claudia. Number of the player. So we right now in Russian 61 people watching. You can ask us any que questions or tell us from where you're watching. <coughs> yeah, it's a really nice goal actually. You had the so Sabrina Shaya was over the goal a bit, hovering around it, and I think it was Magdalena, but maybe I'm not sure. It's yes. well, who then used the space that was created under the goal. Uh, her teammate to score. Oh. And then we have another scrum, but at the bottom of the pool trying to get in there. Um, just now we have another scrum at the surface trying to get hold of the ball. One of the you know who's playing in the Piranha swimsuit? Could you see the number? I wonder if it's not uh, Virginia Patel, but I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. She helps. Have we know it? Vienna Basket trying to. Uh, so, Fiorenza is trying to establish an attack. So, uh, going down there, um, supporting each other, but they're now, right now playing very much at the surface, which we see before with Barcelona happened, and right now they're trying to go down there, getting creep of the ball. We can't see it right now, it's because it's in the fight. There she comes. I can't see any number. I couldn't see any number. Okay, and then we have here the Greta Bihan, who is... Uh, Fighting by herself against two oh, players, and nice we have uh, Thea from Firenze. She actually was uh, living last year in Italy. She's from Norway originally. The sound is losing quality. Yes, uh, there's nothing we can do about it right now. I think they will hear us, and uh, maybe there's so many people talking about teams arriving. So right now we have another attack from the uh, the basket. They reach. They're really good, trying to get past the guard. Uh, and that should be. That looked like. It looked like. No, that was free throw. Uh, free throw for Vienna. There yeah, for Firenze, sorry, and uh, holding without the ball. So free throw against Vienna, actually. Yes. Is this sound still bad? There's one minute left in the first time of the last group game for women's um, trying to get past here. But there's another counter attack from Vienna, call from the referee. Free throw for Vienna, uh, holding by Fidenza. Next year, Daniela Mainzer, who with the ball. No, that's not her. Okay, yeah, nine times was actually down. Next yes. to the goal. So we're in, on the corner of the Firenze basket, on the close corner. Firenze is defending well now. We have uh, always defense and goal here. Very present. And then uh, not giving much space to the Vienna players, now that it's one against one, defender is missing. 
had defended got a pass over the goal, got called to defense, got a hold of the ball, and it is half time. So very good play actually by by Firenze. Playing in white. And uh, so <coughs> we saw a really um, interesting first half. Um, Firenze is establishing to get the defense better set up because of one of the mistakes. Uh, of the goalies, the basket was stolen and Vienna could score. We now have a change of sides. We're here at Berlin Live in game 27 of the 2019 Champions Cup. In blue, we have Vienna playing, and in white, Firenze, who up from Italy. Um, and that we see on the camera getting the white team. To the other side, maybe you can see now who's playing with the Piranha swimsuit. Is it six? Well, a lot of players are um, yeah. exchanging jerseys all the time. Um, yeah, so, 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 so it doesn't nice mean anything. Well, it doesn't mean anything. Nothing is Virginia. Yeah, yeah it's okay. I'm not that sure. The size, I think, is Virginia. So, let's just do a quick uh, recap with the trainer. Um, some of them are watching from in the water to get give more feedback. Um, I think we have uh, outside, so the coach outside, we have Andrea Menegin for the Firenze team. And uh, in the water, I think it's Samuel Emoshi. And the Vienna women actually don't, uh, don't have an external coach. There's a captain, Denise Schmutz, who is uh, coaching the team. It's an interesting game, what do you think? I, I was I was expecting it honestly to be less uh, less balanced. I was yes. I said that Vienna would dominate clearly the game. Yeah, that would that's what I thought at the beginning and right now we see a really good setup of Florenza. They really improved in one day, so I think it's it's nice and even after they committed the fault of 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 not having a goalie there, they like really got the crib and now there's always a defense um, so it's really nice to see that they're going there and it's really uh, and we have some Antonio's uh, cheering for Italy and then they try here to So we have cheerings from Antonio for Italy. As I said before, we're just going into the second half. Players are getting ready. Um, Mario is also cheering for Italy. So who's in the Österreicher? The the fight the Vienna Damen an. Hand in chat. Because so Vienna got to the both teams got to the ball at the same time, but Vienna got. With first, then we have Firenze. I was with Topo Solis who had was holding on to the ball. Now we have two Vienna players underwater, they're very fast attacking now. But no defender in position from Firenze, really arriving last minute, now holding on to the ball. Oh, thank you, Ari Antonio. We have the best speakers today, he said. Um, and that was a goal, that was a very nice goal from the close corner, there was two attackers under the basket and the defender was not well positioned and was, uh, from the back side of the goalie she got lifted by the attacker, I didn't see who it was me neither So I think that Firenze asked for a timeout, yes. White timeout here, Firenze from Italy. So Andrea Menegin seems to be telling them the coach um, to get into the head from his uh, hand language. He was yes. signaling a lot with his head. So think and watch out and be where you have to be. Just breathing a little bit. 
to uh, Vienna girls really relaxed there. Um, in two, they have two goals already, and I think that the, the Vienna team also really wants the win, and I think they want to win with a bit more defense than what they have been doing the first half time. So let's see how it keeps on evolving. Two seconds left, and it's starting again. Vienna has the ball. Number ten, eleven, Claudia ready to. They're going really good. Come accompanying each other towards the defense of the Vienna basket, moving around here really nicely with the ball. Still in possession of uh, player number eleven, Claudia Ricci. Here I'm not is coming uh, closer to the basket, but he, she's by herself against three players. She's really missing uh, passing opportunities. Still, I still start coming over the goalie. She passed to her teammates. And Vienna got the ball back. Oops, so we're going to show you here passing the ball. To Lucy Schwarz. Oh, that's Lucy in there, but nicely stolen from one of the Fiorens players, still struggling because there are three or four now. The ball dropped to the Vienna. Vienna got the ball again. So, well, to Shaya again, have someone in the close corner here. Who seems to have the ball, Jackie Hayes. We have three attackers of Vienna now at the basket, really trying to the white team. Ball. But a very good work by the, by the Italian defense. Mm. Uh, nice to the ball, the ball. Trying to pass it, but they're really crabbing onto it. And there's you know, so always scrum. this a scrum, and it's pushed towards the um, Vienna basket they're missing some white players underneath or better positioned underneath and uh, it's one on one actually two no players. no two white players again no it's this is score for Florence so it's really close but it was they were not going fast no. enough to work fast. Too, I think they were too slow I think if the player with the ball had uh, trust herself a bit more and gone faster, maybe she would have had a chance, but... Uh, um, do you know yeah. what uh, Maples versus Orcas, como quedaron? Si, sí, Orcas contra Marcos ganaron 11-1. 11-1. Okay, so... Um, midfield fire again. Yeah, it's Sophie Bartenstein, Sabrina Schoy here from the closed side coming. Hiding the goalie and, and the goal. scoring from the close. A very nice goal from Sabrina Shoya, number 18 from Vienna. So five minutes left, six minutes left for this game. Vienna so far hasn't called timeout the second half. No, I don't, no. I don't know if they will. They might. That's 3-0. So we're back attacking the scrum that's a referee call, free throw for oh. holding against Vienna. But they're really, really self-confident in their defense. They're just taking their time and switching, switching really fast. This was another call. Very good at, the, at defending actually. Yes. Uh, Vienna women, the Austrian women are actually good at defending. So now it's free throw um, for Vienna. For Vienna, decided by the deck referee, so we don't know why. Now we attack. Really nice. Three people down from Vienna, also four down from Firenze, trying to stop the attack. Um, they're really getting in there and get tracked away by one of the Fiorenza players in white. Trapping of the ball, but recovered from the 
of players are behind the ball now and attacking at the little opportunities had to get, get away from the basket. So there was a gap in the defense. Well, Taylor Skill style is back there. Now the game is 1 1. Steffi Pop attacking. And now Sakataka now flying in front of the basket. The ball is in the close corner. We have Valentina Nikini on the goal now for Firenze. She was also playing with the men. She's a very good goalkeeper. I think she's the captain as well. I'm not 100% sure. Very experienced player as well. Sifania Koka getting again in front of the basket. She almost left, came back, she really saw that the ball was not that far. Oh, now there oh, is no, 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 Pushing out the basket to that goal, so no goal, free throw for Firenze or against Yana. So it stays at 3-0. Free throw is going on in the last few minutes of the game. Valentina has got the ball. Lost the ball, recovered it and passed, tried to pass it to another player, but slightly moving backwards to their own basket. So Christina got the ball now, passing to Valentina again. Midfield fighting, the Firenze players are missing. She was, Valentina's fighting it by herself against two players. She's on the surface, swimming forward. On the closed side of the Vienna basket, actually. Trying to establish an attack, set it up, passing down. There it comes the second wave. That was a very unfortunate pass to a Vienna defender. Yes. And Sabrina Shoya is trying now to swim away passes. And that's one on one there for missing the defense. He's trying to attack over herself against many players. Jackie Hay is here. Sat around the basket. So nice, def nice so defended. So we have four position wide, struggling against two players. This looks like dangerous play against the head, around the head. So free throw. This was trying to get the ball. I guess it was dangerous play around the head. Um, so free throw for Firenze. So one minute and a half left now in this game. Yes, just that has the ball. Pass it to Anita Riki. So one minute twenty seconds left in this game. They're really trying to get in the play more together, so you see for once improving <laughs> over the game. Tears just that again. I think the ball got out. Then I have uh, the impression that the uh, player who was at the surface tried to yes. pass it around and took it out of water. Okay, so players are s the teams are separated. The no, free throw for Vienna. I think both the ball got out of the water. Yes. So Zavihan got the ball, passed it forward. She has the ball again on the open side. Passing back, we have Daniela Neuntorf in here, very well positioned around the ball. I didn't see her. Danny, that to the close side. Now Zikadeka position in front of the basket, waiting for a pass. Mitchell Pussy is closing the basket now. We'll see another ball for you. Will this be another goal from the top? And that she is. This is a goal, that's a goal, by Denise Schmutz. The in the three so. last seconds of the game, we saw another goal, and that's end of game. So 4-0, and uh, thank you very much for watching all the women's um, games. Because we have group games, now we're switching to the quarterfinals for the men. And uh, thank you very much, and I think I'm done with commentating now at the Champions Cup this year and I will hand over to Tosten who is handing over for me. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm also handing over to Lorena, so see you later.
Yes, thank you very much, Annika, for coming to you all the time, and uh, thank you for everyone who was listening. I will hear you again. Or you will hear me again next year, I hope. Bye. Are you leaving already, Lisa? I think I think I am. Okay. I'm supposed. Maybe I'll do another game later if I'm if I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm supposed to to be leaving. Okay. All right. So. Um, the T was next game. It is uh, Molde Bulletovito, which is the first one group D and the second of group C. So let's tell the players again. I have Bulletovito, the Woodways, uh, they have years of winter at first, and then Torsten can with Molde. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Are you waking up and connecting on the internet? This year. So, number five, Jan Dimishka, uh, seven, Philip Ratna, eleven, Yaralaf Decha, thirteen, Martin Kesar, twenty three, Thomas Dimishki, sorry, twenty six, Jakob Shishek, thirty one, Philip Tu, forty four, Thomas Ries, forty seven, Jakub Benda, fifty five, uh, Alice Peterka, which is the captain. 57, Pavel Fjosman, 59, Jakub Hilstein, 65, Josef Mekko, and Tosso with Molde. And we're going on with uh, Molde, can you do it? Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. yeah we can so we're starting with the uh, number one, Barking at Pedersen, number yeah. two, Jakub. I think he's not here. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, uh, <laughs> forgot it or like, uh, yeah, misleading the dates. So number two, uh, Jacob Larhammer, number four, Ivan Gurnan, number five, Ivan Zovic, Number six, Jürgen Uberstedt. Number seven, Ivo Björnum. Number eight, Ulrich News. Number nine, Pierre Solidake. Number ten, Matthias Borsten. Number thirteen, German Strand. Number seventeen, Leif Zervich. Number twenty-four, Hermann Nieland Hansen. Thirty-three, Niel Nordal. I hope it was almost correctly pronounced. Cause yeah, Norwegian is perfect, Tarsen. Oh, no. <laughs> Better than the German. <laughs> now, let's see. The Molde team, as I heard, also struggling with the West Black. Uh, for example, like Bart Inge Pedersen was a super important player Yeah. Uh, for Molde. Um, I also remember it. Two years or last year, we also had struggle with players as well, just Molde. They haven't won the last two years. I mean, they, they won ten years in a row. In the last two years, I mean, Vixen won the year before the last one. The last year, Orcas. I think the, 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 the game, no, it's still one and a half minutes until the game starts, and we can see already. The players here, it's about to them to get a feeling who's in, who's out. But yeah, Molde was like a... a Serious champion here for 10 years in yeah. a row, always played in the final, do you remember? And then they, they had like those two years, like a bit of a gap where some of the main players had to leave, uh, you know, they got kids, they were uh, injured, uh, they got new players, and now they kind of regroup and it looks like they're back. <laughs> but so yes. let's see now, you know, how it's going to be the performance um, in this Champions Cup. We have, we were talking yesterday about like, which one were the top nations and I said well at least I mean we have I don't know in which order but the top three places will go either to Norway to Colombia to Germany and also Finland I mean it's, it's looking uh, very good so this is my assumption what do you think yeah, of we see the matches yesterday we have seen a, a six year against any university but as I've learned uh, from the Turkish team is that they just started with eight or nine players because not everyone arrived at that time but a six year uh, victory is also quite huge we have seen another um, it was a 12 zero or something like that against uh, the 20 zero against the Bordeaux team yeah it was the Bordeaux team I are the first time but it's also super super hard to to score 20 goals in 20 minutes and yeah, you know, from the previous years that the offense of Molde is super strong and we will see that right now in the match let's see what the Czech team can do here yeah. also super experienced and played already against the two completely different kind of tactics and games so it's going to be uh, interesting I mean I, for me the, the Czech game is a bit more on strength and holding the ball more like the German game used to be a few years ago and Molde is more on speed and strength so you know they, the Molde players when they go the counter attack they come like torpedoes you know they have this black t-shirt <laughs> they go like three like 
the Jet team we remember from yesterday lost 7-0 against the Finnish team and they won 3-0 against the Fiorentz team. So we see where the offense might be not as massive as it is for Molde, like in comparison. Molde almost scored here, or has already scored here almost 30 goals, and in comparison then we see uh, but the Czech team. Um, yeah, and they, they were, I mean, that was in the, the yeah. group C with. Uh